Welcome back to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox. Our special guest this week, former BC Premier Bill Vanderzam. The subject, once again, is the HST. And we're well into this conversation now, Bill. And we started talking about recall in the last segment before the break and at how many people can be recalled, who you're cherry picking as, as prime targets for a recall. But let's assume that, that we go to that recall process. Ultimately, I think a lot of people in, around the province are wondering where this is going to, where you are going to take us with this. Because if you proceed to the recall level and the premier, let's talk about Vancouver Point Grey and Gordon Campbell's writing and the recall process is successful, you trigger a by-election, Premier Campbell is now forced to relinquish his seat and maybe run for it again. Maybe a perfect opportunity to just exit politics. One doesn't know. Lots of rumors in that regard these days. Right. But who, where do you come into play in that process? Because one has to assume that you're working for the NDP here. Because if you cause an incumbent liberal MLA to be forced out of his or her seat and forced to go to the people, obviously you're not going to be supporting that person. You just help force him or her out of, out of work. So clearly, to the, uh, in a very polarized province like BC, what's Bill Vanderzam doing working for the NDP? Because he must be, because that's the, the only other option we have. Yeah, the NDP is working with us as our liberals, as our conservatives. Right. It's a, big it's a good mix of people. Yeah. It's a big tent and it crosses all party lines. However, you're right, when the election comes, obviously the NDP, if it were a by-election in Point Grey today, would stand to benefit considerably. Right. I expect, however, that by that time there could be a third option. Just exactly what that'll do, I don't know. I don't intend to be involved in the politics. I don't intend to be involved in any by-elections. I stop after the recall. So you're and kind that's of, where the committee sort of ends, except we have option C still available to us, which is a legal challenge and an injunction. So we're working with various associations now. We're inviting associations, the restaurant association, the home builders, the real estate, all these, the hairdressers, the masseuse, therapists, all these people to come in their associations and contribute to a legal challenge. We can get a legal challenge and an injunction for twenty-five to thirty or forty thousand dollars in that range. Right, but back to the political process of the the whole matter of forcing a by-election, which is a very effective, dynamic tool to again impress upon an incumbent government that hey, the folks are just really unhappy with the way things are going. Uh, I've known you long enough to know. My, my question about you helping out the NDP was pretty rhetorical, Bill, because I know I just can't see politically that happening. Politics makes strange bedfellows. You are allies, rather, in the process, in the matter of bringing the petition to the government. But talk to us about the third party option. I know you're a retired politician with minimal interest in ever returning to the to the to the floor of the of the uh, legislature. No interest. But you're also a powerful figure who has caused a lot of people to pay attention to this whole HST and think about re-engaging in politics in BC. Always a good idea in these days of diminishing voter turnout. So hats off to you for that. But do you see a third party option being viable in time for a legitimate candidate in these cherry-picked writings that you intend to force um, yeah. recall. There's no holding back a third-party option. Uh, the Liberals have opened the door to a third party. There's no question about that. And the BC Conservatives are already quite active. Right. And I imagine there might be other groups that are hoping to get involved, so it could be three or four parties in the running. I don't know. And, you know, I frankly, I won't be involved in that. I won't be involved in that. So uh, there will be a third party in the running. Now, a good question you pose, it, will there be time for that? Yeah. Because yeah. the recall would possibly happen in November. That's the earliest we can have a recall. And we hear of, for example, former Fraser Valley Conservative MP Randy White, 
who is involved is somehow behind the scenes in terms of the British Columbia Conservative Party on a provincial level, sort of putting out feelers to see if that organization can be reformed and re-energized. Might that be a reality in time for late fall, early 2011 by-elections? I doubt it. I doubt if a third party could really get ready between now and then and be successful. They could try, but I doubt it would happen. So you're quite right in assuming that there could be an NDP elected in that constituency of Point Grey. That won't change government. That won't change much, but it could happen. It'll certainly send a message to the whole of the Liberal caucus. Hey, if they can do it to the Premier or the Finance Minister, what about me? So I think it would certainly motivate them to reconsider this whole HST issue. What do you know about the Liberal caucus? Uh, is, uh, Very little. They, they present, of course, as all caucuses do, and you've been uh, the leader of a caucus and know about discipline. But there are a lot of people from a lot of really different areas of British Columbia in that Liberal caucus. I don't imagine they are all universally behind the HST uh, as dreadfully unpopular attacks as it's turning out to be. They might have been initially. I think probably a good presentation was given them, no doubt. And this probably goes back a little further than what they're telling us. So I think possibly initially they might have been unified. Right now, I'm sure there's a lot of cracks and breaks and there's a lot of people in there wondering whether they should really co continue to be on side of the HST issue. FightHST.com is the website that uh, Mr. Vanderzam and his colleagues have organized with tremendous success and it's still very much up and running. And if you're looking to educate yourself on the matter of the HST and perhaps become re-engaged in British Columbia politics, it's a great place to start, isn't it, Bill? FightHST.com. FightHST on the website. Certainly there's a lot of good information. Good of you to join us again. We Thank appreciate you, your coming back and uh, have to take our hats off for the organizational success you've already shown us here in British Columbia. It's pretty impressive stuff. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Ray. I'm the chairman and CEO of Mollycore Gold Corp. As the name states, we do have a deposit we're developing in British Columbia, which is a pure molybdenum deposit. But our focus these days is on magnesium in Nevada. Through serendipity, we discovered a large deposit of magnesium running about 10% with a high purity and consists of about 256 million tonnies at this time, 52 billion pounds. Our main emphasis is to move this project forward by beginning a drill program later this year in which we can increase the integrity of the resources into the indicated and inferred as well as increase the resource itself. For further information, please visit our website at mollycore.com or phone us at 604-531-9639. Tax Tips with David Ingram. When can you claim legal and accounting fees? Well, if the tax office goes after you for something and you have to hire a lawyer or an accountant to help you with your tax return and the assessment, you can claim those legal fees as a deduction. Remember, they could be a lot of money, and if you pay $1,000 worth of legal fees, it's going to save you anywhere from $250 to $440 in taxes. That's a tax tip from David Ingram. And that's our program for this week. Our thanks to David Ingram and to our special guest, Bill Vanderzam. And thank you for joining us. If you have some thoughts about today's show that you'd like to share with us, please send them along to comments at themoneyandwealthshow.com. I'm Sterling Fox. See you next time. Comments made on the preceding paid commercial program are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time.